Now I get the special, wonderful honor of introducing our keynote speaker, Ms. Laura Preslin. Uh, Laura is the general manager of strategic prices at Microsoft Corporation and is a great friend to those of us in the pricing discipline. Laura has a lot of great expertise. Previously, she was with the Deloitte Pricing Center of Excellence and AMR Research. And just to show how in pricing you have to be both an artist and a scientist, in addition to all of the good work that she does with Microsoft and has done with her other corporations within pricing, she's also an expert bass player and KISS impersonator. <laughs> That's very true. That's true. So everyone, please welcome a big round of applause for our keynote speaker, Ms. Laura Preslin. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And just for the record, I only donned the makeup. I didn't actually impersonate the rest of KISS, because that guy's things even worse than I do. Uh, yeah, don't worry. There won't be as much funny stuff in this presentation this year, because this is a very serious presentation. Very serious presentation about how to motivate your pricing team. So Kevin gave a little overview of me. I just want to set the context of how I learned about the importance of motivating a team. So he mentioned that I was at AMR Research back in 2003, which is when I started my pricing odyssey. Uh, I was focusing on the customer relationship management space and kept writing about failed software implementations and got really bored. So I started looking for what area actually had tangible ROI, what was exciting, where was their actual hand-to-hand -hand combat going on in the trenches, and I found pricing. Wow, this stuff is really cool. Does everybody else know about this? Other people must think this is cool too. Wow. Uh, so that's how I got involved in pricing. So I covered that space for three years, talking to a lot of companies, talking to a lot of software companies, figuring out ooh, hello, uh, how to do things the best way, sharing what I learned with everybody who would listen to me, about 10 people. Uh, then I decided that uh, that wasn't enough. Just talking about it and writing it down wasn't enough. I wanted to go do it. So I joined Deloitte for a year. Uh, where I was part of their Pricing Center of Excellence and helped implement the software that I had just been talking about. So that lasted for, sorry Mikey, a year. Uh, and then Microsoft called and made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So off I went to the Seattle area, which you see there in the picture. Uh, that's the Seattle skyline. Don't go unless it's July or August. It rains. Uh, and spent two years outside of pricing and said, oh my gosh, I've got to get back into the pricing space. So an opportunity came up to be in charge of the U.S. pricing strategy for all of our online advertising products. Products like msn.com and Hotmail and those online things with the advertisements that show up that sometimes you look at, sometimes you say, why did I get that advertisement and you ignore it? Those. I priced all of those. So it was a bit like an airline model in that you missed that day part, boom, you just lost the opportunity to sell that ad. So it was very exciting. I, I didn't mess that up too badly because uh, after doing that for about 18 months, they gave me the global role of setting prices globally for Microsoft's advertising products. So I left that job a few months ago and it was really interesting to see what happened when I left that team. So when I took it over, well, that sounded very violent. When I took it over, the team was really, really unhappy. Microsoft likes to measure things. Shocking, I know. Uh, and so there's a big survey that everybody answers, a bunch of questions, and it rates how happy your team is. It's called the Work Group Health Index. Uh, and a, a good score is about 80. It's about out of 100. So 80 means you're doing OK. Your team does not hate you. They're productive. Everything's good. My team scored a, anybody want to guess? Anybody want to guess? 51, yes! So my team was a little challenged. Uh, so I had to invest a lot of time into how do I make these kids happy because this is a tough, tough job. And when you're unmotivated, bad things are going to happen. So I spent a lot of time doing this. And it's been interesting as I left my job about, about six months ago now, the team was in such a good place that the person who took over for me has not invested quite as much in keeping the team motivated. So now the team that was really highly productive and doing a great job is now just starting to see performance kind of fall off a little bit because there isn't that focus on motivation. So as important as it is to talk about spreadsheets and stochastic optimization and conjoint analysis, I'm here to talk about people. All right? You excited about that? But first, I'm going to lay out a few things about the problem. The problem. Then I'm going to talk about some big things that I did that actually required time investment and deep thought. Uh, and then also just some little things, because sometimes the little things are more important than the big things. And then I'll give you some actions. And these colors will keep you awake for the entire presentation. So. Some of you might remember Jeff Foxworthy, you know, you might be a redneck if. So we're going to do a little thing called, your team might have a morale or motivation problem when. Okay. Uh, the first one is the phrase, I have some feedback. 
makes you cringe. Because you can have positive feedback, you can have ne negative feedback, but when you're in that bad place, anybody's saying, you know, Kevin, I have some feedback for you. Oh, no. You know, you get that little feeling, and you're like, oh, I can take it, remain focused, eye contact, remember not to get defensive. You know, you, you do that. So when, when that happens to you, you might have a motivation problem. Okay, the next one. Uh, this happened to me regularly. Uh, the VP of sales will not sit next to me in a meeting. So that means our teams are not getting along. Now, my skip level boss, my boss's boss, said to me one day, well, you know, Laura, if he sat with you, it would mean you weren't doing your job. <laughs> okay, we have to think about that. He can hate me professionally, but he can't hate me personally. Like, come on, we've got to fix this. So it was clear that there were some issues in between our teams. Is this remotely fun, or should I just skip this slide? This is fun. This is, okay, <laughs> the next one, uh, every one-on-one -on -one is a career discussion. <laughs> yeah, so I had one-on-ones with everybody who worked directly for me about once every week or two, and then skip levels every quarter. And about the 18th time, it was, I don't want to do this anymore. Where else can I take my pricing skills and do something different? I knew there was a motivation problem. So it was very interesting that career discussions are very important, but not every week. Okay, the next one. When you hear the phone ring and then there's screaming in the hallway, uh, I knew that this one kid on my team, Brian, he really liked to answer the phone on speakerphone. It was never a good idea. When I heard, hey, Brian, it's Tim. Oh, crap. You know, then like, I got to run down there and intervene because bad stuff was going down. There was going to be screaming. There was going to be hollering. There was probably going to be tears. Uh, and that was just the salesperson. So uh, it, it's not good when there's screaming that happens after the phone rings. Uh, this one is from me. It's important to share your own experiences. I find that I am sometimes jealous of my dog. My, my dog lives large. Uh, she wakes up in the morning. She gets her little walk in the fenced-in backyard. She gets a little boiled chicken on top of her food. She gets picked up and taken to daycare with her closest friends. She's not worried about who's going to scream at her today or getting 5,000 prices updated on the rate card by the end of day Friday. She's not worried about that stuff. And sometimes, I admit, I'm a little jealous of my dog. And when I start feeling that, every day. I know that I personally have a bit of a motivation problem. Yeah, okay, this next one is good. Uh, you find voodoo dolls of salespeople in the office. My best friend from college is Haitian, so I am down with the Haitian culture. I get it. I understand voodoo. But these were relatively lifelike dolls, and it was a little scary because somebody had bought them in an airport somewhere, and they'd put, like, crayon names of the salespeople on it. Like, okay, guys, kind of funny, but really scary. Can we, can we not wish harm on our partners? I'm just saying. Like, I don't know that that's really contributing to a positive work environment. And those are really scary. Uh, but the last way you know that you have issues is that your team meetings have become group therapy. I'll be like, okay, we've got this problem. What are we going to do about it? Well, I don't know. Here's what we can't do because this will never work. And we tried that eight years ago and that didn't work. And I don't know why I'm here. Hold me. And it gets really, really bad. And then they want to have these complaint sessions. That was one of the, the best ones. We're putting our agenda together for our team meeting. Can we have complaint sessions? I'm saying complaint because it really started with a B and it's a word I can't say because we're on video, you know. Uh, so, yeah. And they just wanted to have that session to close out the meeting. Who are you people? No, we're not going to have complaint sessions. We're going to have fix-it sessions. Yeah, it was, it was rough. But I learned quickly that I had to let them get the anger out before we could move into the productive stage of fixing problems. So my office is hysterical. Big red couch, stuffed animals, fake flowers, pictures of, mommy's here, sit down, tell me what hurts, it'll be okay. Like, I really did that, and it actually kind of worked. Uh, <clears throat> so all of these issues create even bigger problems because you've got fighting going on between partner organizations, and that's not good. So what I would hear are horrible quotes that salespeople would say about my team. This is a good one. We can only compete on price, don't you get it? So then my team's like, wow, they don't understand the value of our product. They don't understand what they're selling. They're probably at the wrong company. Oh no, what do we do? Yeah, uh, the next one. Yeah, you people don't know our business. Wow, did you really just tell the team that is buried in copious amounts of data about every single product nuance in the entire stack of 47 million SKUs that we sell, that we are the ones who don't understand the business? Really? Yeah, so that one was a little off-putting. Uh, you don't know what it's like on the front lines. You're right, we don't. That's why you're here. 
uh, because <laughs> it's, it's like a few good men. We, we want you on that wall. We need you on that wall. But we don't want to be on that wall. We, we're here. We're happy. We're doing our analysis. So you're right. We don't know what it's like. Why don't you tell us instead of screaming? Uh, and then lastly, oh, guys, you just don't get it. We should be paying our customers to buy our products. Has anybody heard that one? I, th I laughed out loud, which was inappropriate because I forgot to mute uh, when I heard that one. Like, really, did you just say that? We should be, our, our products are so lack innovation that we should be paying our customers to buy. Really? Really? Come on. But this stuff all happened, and it creates this lovely problem where you've got a pricing team who thinks they're doing intricate, detailed, exciting work, and salespeople who are just kind of wandering around going, hey, what are you up to today? And, uh, you know, this picture kind of uh, worked for me. So here's the pricing team. <laughs> they're doing really, really deep stuff. And the sales guy, hey, guys, what are you doing? That looks dangerous. Can I touch it? You know? and, and it's a problem. It's a, it's a problem. Okay, but, you know, you got to look at it from the other side too, right? Right? Okay. So